Hi there. I'm Heather. I'm known in the Society for Creative Anachronism as Margaret Northwood, and this is video number three in my series on 16th century hair. Now, as you can see right now, I've got my hair completely covered. That's because I've done some prep work for this video, but I would look completely silly if I tried to start off with that hair showing right now. Um, what I'm going to be doing today is a very late period, very, very end of the, uh, the SCA period, which is supposed to end at 1600. Um, very screamingly near the cutoff for that. I'm seeing pictures from 1596. Um, some of them are arguably out of the period, but I think it's arguable that by that time that uh, this hairstyle is either fully developed or in very late cases um, on women who uh, wore it in their youth and continue to wear it uh, in a time that is not their youth. So uh, here we go. So here are your supplies. Um, what we are looking at then is, of course, as in our previous one, we have our hairspray. Um, I normally have very fine hair, and I don't have a lot of it. I am bringing some of it back uh, due to some other stuff that's going on in my life that doesn't have anything to do here. But uh, currently growing back due to that. Um, so what I'm finding is that with this and another one of my supplies, which I'll tell you about later, I really don't need a volumizing treatment unless my hair is really, really clean. Um, and usually if that's the case, I, I still find that, that this uh, and, and it is enough. But you may want to find there are little um, bottles about that big or so of uh, volumizing, texturizing powder. You can find them available at your local big box store, where it, at wherever it should be most convenient for you to buy, you know, your hair products and that kind of thing. Um, next, you will totally need, you will need a mirror of some kind. I have a darling little mirror that I just bought off a blanket merchant a few years ago. Um, you will need a large paddle brush just for detangling your hair. Uh, you will need, this is a smoothing brush, you can, the little black bristles, 40 billion little black bristles, and literally that's what it's for, just smoothing things down after you've gotten them in place. And then that's a hair. And then this is your ratting comb. I introduced this to you guys in a previous video, but there you go. You see there's a comb kind of inside the comb right there anyway and this is rat the rat tail end of it which is good for making nice parts and uh, and that sort of thing um the requisite 18 billion bobby pins um i'm probably going to use like a whole bunch more today than i probably would um normally um you know if i were wearing this out, just out in the world and that's just because um i want to make sure that it stays in place for you guys um, makes me a little nervous, so I always use extra pins. And frankly, that's not a bad idea anyway. If you don't feel real sure about it, try to use more pins and see what happens there. So out of this baggie comes these two pieces right here. Um, these are described in, uh, how to make these is described in my first video. Um, and then we have an additional piece, additional hair piece for this one today. And it's this, right? And basically the idea is that the interior of this is all kind of, uh, is, a, is a rather thick wire around which is generally twisted a piece of, uh, a, a hair piece that's just basically loop on loop on loop on loop of hair. And it's wired and so it's quite nice and bendy. Uh, the other thing that you will need is an Elizabethan cloth um, for this particular hairstyle. I'm going to show you a thing you can do with this at the end. That is um, reminiscent of some some period hairstyles that I've determined. Now, this is upside down, obviously. So what I'm going to do with this one, like this, I'm just going to take before I even get started, and ooh, and I'm going to unknot where I had it tied the other day. There we go. So, and I'm just going to do an overhand knot right here. There we go. Did I get it? Yes. Now I'm going to take, oops, and I'm going to drop everything on the floor. Here we are. And I'm going to take the top, or take this bottom bit, and I'm just going to use it as an opportunity to really snug up the bottom pretty well. Okay, this is not the top, this is the bottom. Those of you who have constructed these should understand what I'm talking about. Here we go. 
All right, there we go. And now we've got a decent little start for our cloth. All right, yes, and this is the cloth. I do not have a front point on this one. This goes just straight across, right? But you can see that I do have lace on there and it's embroidered from my machine because I like embroidery okay, but I don't like it as much. And, um, and then I also decorated it with spangles, which are super period. And, um, and those were put on by hand and all the construction on that was done by hand. This is another version of the same beastie. Um, literally, this was the tryout to make sure that, because it had been quite a while since the last time that I made a cloth. This was the uh, trial um, for this one, for that one at scale. Um, and you can see it needs some ironing, but this is exactly the same. This is the bottom shape that I gathered up here. And there's the top where it gets all gathered up. All right, there we go. So that's just another example. And of course, you need your coffee. All right, now I'm gonna take this, take this thing off. Um, as I said, I have done some preliminary work on this uh, to make sure we, did, we weren't spending 18 years. So here's the, here's the, here's the very special hair. So, we're going to ignore this part for right now, as though you could. But then I'm going to kind of try to show you what's going on in the back here. Some other things you might feel useful, uh, find useful are some things I actually have been using secretly without telling you. And it's these little alligator clips for just pinning up sections of, of your hair away as you need them. All right. Now, initially what I did, let me move this forward and kind of off to one side. Ooh, come here, you. And, oh, heck, who knows? All right, so what I've done, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it, but basically um, what you want to do is part your hair initially front to back, okay? So generally what you want to do is take point like maybe just behind your ear or right in front of it, depending on how thick your hair is. And you want to part it across the top of your head to your other ear. So like this. Now, for those of us who have very fine or very thin hair or very fine thin hair, as in my case when you're in the lottery, um, instead of making it directly across, maybe move it back some, an inch or two, toward the crown of your head. All right. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take and you're going to divide the back half in half again, and you're going to make two braids as though you're pippy freaking long stocking. And now that you can see my braid, you can probably tell how very thin my hair really, really is. See? Right? Okay. And as you can tell to the list of supplies, we will also add some hair elastics. These are actually really big ones because I have a seven-year-old who runs them through the house and loses them. And then the cats play with them. And I'm sure that the entire collection is building a large and new civilization underneath the refrigerator. However, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and got the braid done. Now, I recommend for these braids, when you're making them, as you start them especially, what you want to do is be sure that you're braiding up and maybe even a little bit forward, you know, for just as long as your arms will manage that. Um, sometimes our, our arms get really, really tired and that's fine. You can make it work. Just make sure it's as high as possible. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to need my hair pins. All right. I'm going to take these two braids. I'm going to send them back, send them towards one another. And then I'm going to cross them. See? They're like this. I'm going to send them back the direction that they came. Okay? And I'm going to start almost roping them. So I'm going to take this front piece, take what's in front here, and I'm going to tuck it under like that. And again. All right. Yep. Here we go and pull just a little bit. There we go. So you get a firm. Now I'm going to repeat it with the other side. Basically, I'm just winding the braid back around itself. All right, see? And now I'm going to pin those in place. These are going to form a base. For our next pieces 
and for a good place to tie our cloth on. So I need to be sure. You do want to make sure that you have pinned them in place. Generally, um, making X's of your bobby pins is what I recommend. Um, some folks out there might have some different recommendations. I would love to hear them because I do this okay, but I'm not necessarily fabulous with all things hair and would like to know if you have any other solutions. So, all right. Now, we're going to take these cut up bun forms. Um, if you guys uh, aren't interested in going back, basically you purchase one of these inexpensive bun forms, um, four to six dollars. I needed a petite one because I don't have a lot of hair. Um, and then you cut them up and you put them on your head and you try them, you, you trim them to size. So basically, but what I'm going to be doing with these is forming an even better base because again, I don't have a whole lot of hair. I'm putting it right here. Basically, if I were a little girl wearing pigtails, I would be putting these basically in those places, kind of in front of the braid so that they kind of back on to that braid. It, it forms kind of a backstop for them. Excuse me, the braids form a backstop for this. There we go. Is that going to stay? Yes. And I'm going to repeat that with the other side. And I'm just pinning right through this nylon over here. Now, I think that's going to stay pretty well. All right. The next thing we're going to do, and you can tell that my hair is extra special today. Yes, I made it extra special for you. Um, now we've got all this in place. We're going to leave that there because the next thing we're going to do is work with the other part of our hair. Now, um, I want to be clear that this particular order works for me. Um, the next part that we're doing um, may, may mean that for you, you need to switch and do your braiding in the back of your hair last because what we're going to do now is we're going to take our hairspray and we're going to take our rat comb. And I left a section undone, but it looks like I may need to do more than just that section. So you do not want a part of this. We're going to spray our hair down. You don't want a, you're not going to have a center part for this particular one. Um, we're all used to, uh, to seeing the, um, and then you're going to take your rat comb and you're going to back comb the hair you just sprayed. Um, and I'll talk. Um, we're all used to seeing the heart-shaped headdress heart shape hair of the latter part of the 16th century and um, this would come about uh, slightly later. Some women just didn't look great with a heart shape, um, heart shape hair and they determined that um, they looked better with something that was a little rounder, um, maybe more squared off, but, um, but still very much collie. <laughs> but still very much, uh, still very much in the realm of big hair. Um, squared off, not quite so heart shaped as what had become popular at first. We have a few examples of where Elizabeth did this, but she did it with kind of frizzed hair. Excuse me. She did it with kind of frizzed hair, not quite what we're doing today. And I will do a, I will do one on that, on how you do a frizzy hair hairstyle, or how I do a frizzy hair hairstyle. I don't do it very often because I have to put my hair up in tiny little pink foam rollers overnight, and I, I just don't sleep well like that. Um, I can occasionally get it done if I am going to be going to an event. And say I'm staying in a hotel and for whatever reason we know that we're not going to be getting to the event until like later in the day. Um, and if I want to do something along the lines of, um, ah, here we go. If I'm going to do something along the lines of, uh, <clears throat> of that, what I can do is just do a pin curl and then throw a head covering on over it until it's time for me to, to, to take that out at the event. Um, but I will show you that one day as well. Um, and then there's some others that, that look like that 
um, but just flat out require a frontal wig. All right. So we have gotten, as you can see, we have teased our hair out to um, lengths that uh, only only your hairdresser should know about. Um, and so now what we're going to do, I'm going to, give me just a second, Marla. There we are. I am wearing my little Elizabethan jacket today. This is, this is my little Elizabethan jacket. There you go. Um, and, and partlet and smock so that you guys could get an example of what it looks like to put this on while you're wearing the clothes or at least some of the clothes. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this piece right here. I'm going to fold the ends under because I know, um, you know, I've been using this piece for a few years now and I'm, I'm pretty familiar with how long the pieces need to be. So I folded the ends under like that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of gently brush this forward, right? And I'm going to put this in front as though I were almost as though I were mounting like some kind of fake braid or crown braid. So right there. Okay. Then I'm going to take this hair. Actually, I could do something intelligent and um, pin this in place. You want to pin, there we go. I had it curved back. You don't necessarily want it curved back, but you do want it curved down. And pin in place. Don't, with these, the wire is actually big enough that I would not try to get your, uh, your pins around the wire, especially if they're these little, the ones like this, as opposed to the, the more open uh, sorts of hair pins that are more U-shaped than this. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to gently gather up all this hair that I never knew I never knew I had until I was doing these hairstyles, right? And from here we have reached what o'clock. So I've taken the ends, those, those really long ends, and gathered them up and I made a tiny little bun that is going basically at the back of the hairstyle here. I'd show you, but it doesn't make any sense. I, I tried to uh, do this video before, and one of the things that I noticed was that, that just that's not actually helpful. So trust that there's a tiny little bun of just the ends of the hair that I've got that I've tucked up. Okay, so now I, what we're doing, like I said, oh, right here, we're going to take... Here we go. You're going to make sure that you have adequate coverage. And you're going to take your smoothing brush. Let me come in here. And you're going to do that. Okay. And from here, it's pinning and fussing and pinning and fussing. Let me, you know what? Maybe I will use my little mirror if I can get it to play nicely. Here we go. Now, you want to watch your shape because it's real easy to accidentally go Dr. Quinn, medicine woman, with this particular hairstyle, and that's not actually going to be super helpful for you. What you're going to be doing, you can either take, where am I? Um, you, uh, you can either take kind of your rat comb and just kind of use it to stroke these back into place, which works. If you're very, very gentle, that will work. Otherwise, you're just going to be combing out all of your poofing, and that's not going to be the look that you want. Um, you're going to look out for the strays that inevitably happen with this hairstyle. Make sure that you're putting them, there we go, make sure you're putting them back. All right. All right, so now... One of the things you guys probably noticed, if you have any command of color, is that that particular hair piece is very much not the same color as my hair now. That's because I've had this that piece. It was given to me in the early 2000s, and it's a very good piece. Um, and so it's lasted for quite a while, but when I originally got it, um, 
I was very much a, a, a much lighter blonde at that point. I've darkened up over the years, which is what the women in my family just do with our hair. Um, and I still use it. If you are buying this piece now, obviously you really want to try to um, get much closer to your hair color than I have because this will show, if you can see some plates, it's still really showing through a little right here. Um, and I could comb stuff over that, but we're not going to do that right now. So basically, I have, oops, okay, here it is. You take your smoothing brush, you make sure that everything has a very lovely smooth exterior and then we take our modern convenience and we spray the snot out of it. Now you also want to spray the back. Um, one of the things that, that I have noticed is that unless you, and sometimes even then, Unless you really shellac into place, these little tiny hairs at the back of your head, they're going to fall out the bottom of your quaff. And you'll be arguing with them all day. If you shellac them in place, maybe you put like some cross pins, maybe. Sometimes, if, uh, if you know, the winds are feeling generous that day and your hair is feeling it, um, they will stay in place for like half the morning. Uh, but I find that I often argue with them all day. There's just a little sliver of icicle hairs. Now, we're going to talk now about these little side hairs. You can see here that I've got this going on. There's actually some portrait evidence uh, where women did very small amounts of frizzing right here. So if you have a very narrow bore, um, um, narrow bore curling iron, that could be a good and very period thing for you to do. I, I think it would look cool. As it is, those are just hairs that I'm just going to tuck back for today. All right. There we go. Now, some of you may find that you get a lot more traction out of spraying the heck out of it and then using the smoothing brush so that it stays very smooth for you in the rest of the day. Um, I did it the other way around this time. So now we're going to get our cloth, which is, of course, come a little bit untied, snug up the back again so that we have, you know, a tight, we have a nice tight back. Now we're going to take our cloth and we're not going to do another overhand loop here. And I'll show you why here in a bit. So we're going to take our cloth, put it on our noggins very carefully. There we go. All right. Now, we have this out to either side. One thing we want to do, we want to find the point of the top of the cloth. We want to put it there. As, much, as close to the crown of our head as possible. And there's a reason for this. I will tell you here in a moment. In the meanwhile, what we're going to do is we're going to take our our cords, they're going to take them up. They're going to go in front of the little cut up bun pieces where we put those and behind our long wired piece. We're going to cross them, give it a little tug. There we go. We're going to bring them back down. We're going to, yep, I got a few hairs that have already escaped. We're going to try to avoid those as we tie our cloth in place life, certainly in life for me anyway, um, and then we're just going to, to you know, do a, a basic knot, or not knot, but um, bow that you can release yourself. Sorry, I'm having kind of a time. I got quite a few hairs back here that came loose. All right. And then one other thing, of course, is using your mirror, your little hand mirror. And using it to look at the back of your of the nape of your head to make sure you've got it, you know, all laced into place. We can see here. Oh, we can't see here. There we go. See where things are. I actually need to tie that higher. But I'm not going to fuss with that now because we're going to show you the next thing. So I'm going to pull this forward a bit. Because if you have a cloth, this doesn't this isn't going to work out today. 
But if you have a cloth, mm, annoying. And sometimes you find you need to futz with it some more. There we go. If you have a cloth that has quite wide wings with a, a decoration on the side, sometimes you will find that you can make it so that it goes around the edges. It just depends on your cloth. You, you need it to have quite a deep, uh, a deep length from, from, from the back of your head to, to the front cheek pieces and, and front pieces. Um, and so here we go. Now I want to show you one of the other benefits of this particular, this particular hairstyle. This is a little, just a little hair design, a hair bob thing that I did with some wire and some freshwater pearls on the end of a regular bobby pin. See, I could make it into look like a tiny little you know, flower, but if I wanted to, but really it's just a pearl decoration thing. And one of the things you can do with this is just kind of open it up and then you can stick it right in there. And you can see this, yes? And you just dot those through your hair or something like that all through your hair and you have the lovely decorated hair of the latter period. One thing I do want to share with you guys that I think you're going to love is the, the following item. I found this actually in a bundle, little bundle for about $2 US um, at a store called Hobby Lobby. They have a bridal section and it's kind of got a, a decorative part. Um, to it for like decorating aisles and, and the ends of the ends of pews and this sort of thing. And while I was there, I found these little bundles of these beauties. All they are they they are begging to be hair ornaments for the late period. And so this would be really great if you could devise a way to just pop that in your hair. These would actually be a better scale even because you can see that this one is not hidden in my hair. Whereas this one right here is a little small and a little hard to, little hard to find. But uh, that, that wasn't bad as, a, as kind of a proof of concept. I used to have about 10 or 12 of those, and I think I've lost all but this one. So at any rate, um, here we go. There we go. All right, now let's talk about some storage issues. These particular pieces... Um, are stored in my jewelry box. I have a very, very large jewelry box that we were given um, at my wedding, and I keep it in there with all the other stuff. And the only way that that's not going to get snagged um, is by putting it in a baggie. I literally just use a little sandwich baggie to store all of my uh, all of my hair pieces, and that's the only reason why that hair piece has stayed as nice as it mm, as nice as it has. Here we go. There we are. Um, has stayed as nice as it has for as long as it has. Um, and because it's, you know, it's hidden up in my hair, yes, there's going to be some snags because I'm pinning it in place and all this other stuff. Um, but it's going to be hidden. So as you can see, we have our lovely little, our lovely little, um, very late 16th period little hairdo. And um, I hope that you have found this a uh, very useful sort of video and that you will post with videos about how you did yours and pictures about how you did yours. Thank you so much for listening. And um, I'm hoping to get some more out here in the future. Have a good day. Bye.